First, why do we wanna set this up as a multi-output instance? Well, for me, I prefer to do my mixing and processing in Logic, all the separate tracks in the actual Logic mixing view versus handling that processing in battery itself. Hey, this is Marcus, AKA Cradle Cat, and today we're going to continue our Native Instruments routing series in Logic Pro and look at how to set up your battery instance with multiple outputs. So if you wanna see how we did that with the contact player so that you can mix it on different tracks in Logic, go ahead and check out this other video here. This video, we're gonna go ahead and jump into setting that up in battery. Way that we can set this up is, uh, you know, by default, you can see we just get all of the outputs and one track here. What we wanna have is having them all in separate tracks in the mixer view or in the timeline view. and that's not currently possible if I just have it set up out of the box like I would normally do when I'm just getting started with using battery. However, to make this work, before even creating a new instance, I need to go to this menu right here and go to Edit Preferences in Battery. And then in the Engine section, set up the audio outputs for new instances to Custom, because by default that's going to be 16x stereo. That can work. It's just you don't you don't need it. <laughs> you don't need all those to be stereo, um, and that's going to leave us room for mono channels. So you know by default it's going to be that set at 16. I'm going to change that to eight, and this automatically updates. So once I've closed that, I'm going to create a new software instrument track, set it up as battery, but this time I want to choose multi output. 8x stereo, 8x mono. I'll go ahead and create this. And now it loads up a blank instance. I'll find the same kit that I was already using. And the big difference here is that um, this is something that I wasn't able to do on the previous one if I just have it the default setup with all stereo outputs. But when I go to choose each individual output now, I have all my mono outputs as well, which is helpful because I don't want all my drum sounds to be stereo. Like I just want my hi hats to be mono. There's unless it's a you know cool affected just straight from battery hi hat that has some cool panning or spreading. I just want it to be mono. So that's why I went through that process of of getting it set up so that it's it's uh, seeing those properly. Otherwise, all of these would be stereo. But uh, let's go ahead and take a step back again and, and get the setups so that we actually have something to output it to. I'm going to go ahead and just drag that into my drum bus first. So now that we have that set up, the uh, next thing that we need to do, I just clicked X to bring up my mixer view here. We'll go to our new multi output track and just click the plus button a bunch. And this creates our individual channels for that multi output track. Here you can see we have eight stereo tracks, because we have two different channels, the left and right, and then eight mono channels for 17 through 24. What that's gonna let us do is now route the individual hits from battery into those individual channels in Logic so that we can work with them here. Something that's uh, just kind of easier for me is I'll also label these um, just so it's easier to find. So I'll label that first one toms on the uh, first stereo output. We'll go to the kick here. We'll do hi-hat, snare, clap, and shaker. I think these are all mono, but uh, maybe one of them, maybe the clap is stereo. We might have to change that. Uh, and then once I have these set up, another thing that's just nice to do is go ahead and select all these. I'm just holding command and clicking those channels here in the mixer board and right click create track. That's going to let us see it here in the timeline view, which is just nicer to look at sometimes and also lets you automate over it more easily uh, with the automation view. So now that we have those set up here, the next piece is actually, now that we've set up the scaffolding on the logic side for the channel strips we need to output to, we're gonna tell battery where those outputs are. <laughs> so 
We bring up our battery instance. Now we have this hit right here. We have our kick right here. I'm just going to right click that. You can see the output is currently set to master. I'm going to change that to mono 17 since that was the channel we had for our kick. You can see it's now outputting through an individual channel. So even if I mute the rest of it, this is just the master uh, coming from the master and master bus of contact or of a uh, master bus of battery. Um, all the other outputs are heading to our tracks. So you can see even when I mute this here, that kick is still coming through because now the kick is bypassing the master bus and battery. The next piece is we'll just go through and route the rest of them. So snare, again, let's do this to our mono 18. Uh, whoops, that was actually our hi-hat. So we actually want this to be mono 19 for the snare. So we'll change that over. The hi-hat needs to go to 18. Okay, so we've got the shaker here. The shaker, I'm just clicking on that track and you can see it's 21. So we'll go to 21. This is also heading to 21, although this sounds, that may be stereo, but uh, oh well, we'll, we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and add a second shaker here. So I'm just labeling another one of those stereo tracks, create track, uh, shaker two. <laughs> and now back on our battery instance, We'll go ahead and set that to our second stereo output. So that's five, six. Oops, and actually <laughs> got that wrong. So that should be five, six. And then that clap, let's go ahead and send that to 20. You can see that should also be stereo. You can see uh, if you're listening in headphones or speakers, um, that effect didn't quite come through as nicely. So uh, same thing here. Go ahead and label that clap stereo. Right click this, create track. And now we have seven, eight. So go ahead and output this to seven, eight. And then that tom, that's our, that's the one we're missing there. Uh, we want this tom to go to three four. So direct out stereo three four. So you can see nothing's coming through the main channel now because we've routed them all individually. Now, one thing to note here is that it's now skipping the master processing in battery. So if you have any of this extra compression, EQ, saturation, limiting, anything like that set up over in battery, it might not sound as snappy or polished as you want it to once you, right after setting it up like this. You'll want to replicate some of that processing on a drum bus on your own in Logic uh, to, to get some of that effect back since that in battery that was initially being processed together as a little master bus within the battery instance. So you can see I've already done that here just with a group track. Um, so all those individual channels all go into this group track where I can process them and compress them here. So you can see now we've got these different meters going up and down for each of those hits. So. I can now, to my heart's content, be uh, mixing these and processing these in the individual Logic tracks, just like I would with any other Logic track. So, you know, we're feeling like it's just one of those times where we're putting the hi-hat left side. 
then we'll go ahead and do that here. <laughs> um, maybe we'll have our Tom with just a, you know an extra widening feature here. Maybe we just really throw some crazy chorus effect on it. You know, just something. Just something to, you know, add a little bit more there. And I can do all those in my normal plugins that I'm used to using in Logic because we've set it up as this multi-output. So now we've done it. We've walked through how to set up your battery instance for multi-output so that you can route it to individual tracks in Logic, do all your mixing there. I personally love to do that whenever I'm mixing or processing things just so I have that control I'm used to in Logic. That's why we've gone through this effort to set it up. And then I just put it in as part of my Logic template so that I never have to do it again. It's just already built into my Logic project templates. So if you have any questions on this, please drop them in the comments. Let me know. If you want to see how to do this same thing in contact, go ahead and check out my other videos on the series here. I'll uh, include the links in the description, and they're also linked up in the info bubble pop-up. Again, if you like this content or just like my music in general, go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube for more. And also check out my music under Cradle Cat on Spotify uh, and here on YouTube as well. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Marcus, and I'll see you next time.